The first 10 minutes of the movie, Milton, I couldn't breathe. First 10 minutes of the movie, I couldn't breathe. Um, a model shows up. And think about this. In child trafficking, human trafficking, the recruiters aren't men. People think that there's some weird dude in a white van picking up and kidnapping They're kids. Women, huh? Which is part of it. It's actually a woman. They're women. They're baiting them in. Why? They're less threatening. Yeah. Right? And... Uh, and, and, the, and the, the woman recruits the little girl and, and asks to talk to the dad. And, you know, apparently I don't know where the mom was. And then next thing you know, a little boy comes in and the recruiter's like, oh, man, two, you know, two for one special. Next thing you know, she sells them on a story that you're going to be a model. We're going to put you, got a photo shoot. We got to put you out in our album so people can see you. And I'm thinking about how many, we're, we're from Chicago. Yeah. That happens all the time in Chicago and Oakbrook. Yep. You know, but to older, you know, to, you know, they try to sell you, oh, you look like a model. And they just how they recruit mm -hmm, you to their agency. Mm -hmm. But now this is happening to kids. And so, you know, when they're looking at uh, the, the millions of people and, and children that are, are disappearing, they think that two, two to four million of those people that are disappearing are children. And so the sick part about human trafficking, why it's growing, and America being the number one consumer of this, of this, uh, of this, uh, of this child pornography is... Um, is is it's, it's crazy because they'll try to kidnap these kids as young as five, four, five, six years old. And so you'll see in the movie they they got albums of these kids at four, five, six years old posing in a bed and being child raped. Mm -hmm. Sick. And the guys, one of the cops is like, "Listen, man, I've been to a lot of murder scenes. Right? You've been a cop. You've been to a lot of murder scenes. You've been to a lot of uh, graphic, horrific things, right?" Mm. But the guy's like, "This is different. I can't shake this out of my head. I've seen murder scenes that people have seen their, their head get blown off, but to see children like this, the innocence being raped and taken from them and being treated like..." piece of garbage I can't get out of my head and the guy's like listen I'd rather go back and do murder scenes because mm. I can't deal with this stuff mm. and and um, my sister and my brother-in-law do this type of work that's one of the nonprofits we support and um, um, so they tell me some of the stuff they were doing but it never you know I, I never was able to visually see what they were doing until I saw this movie and so um, now you got nieces and you got nephews yeah right yeah and uh, yeah, yeah you're still in a generation you're not so far gone you're a millennial but you still remember the generation. You still go out. You still go out and go play. Go to you know whatever case may be, right? It's rough now, man. It's rough, and right now it's more. It's becoming well. It's become, and it's always been. I think now that we have more, uh, more platforms to show more and have have more exposure. Now we're able to see it a lot more because this was a, this was alive in the '80s. This was yeah. alive in the '70s. It's been alive for a while. But um, one of the biggest and the only reason why I'm heavy on this, um, my family isn't involved in any you know illegal things in Mexico or in Ecuador. Or, or uh, cartel activity, but mm -hmm. I have people who are close to my family who, who are involved. And I, I, I came up with this art. I came across this article that speaks about that in 2018, cartels made roughly 500 million a year smuggling migrants into the United States, and it's a half a billion dollars. Yeah. So today, this source of income, because this was published in February of this year, today this source of income has ballooned into a 13 million dollar industry. Yeah. From Literally smuggling, smuggling people into yeah. the country to, so they can do um, unpaid labor, yeah. sex, la uh, sex slaves for people in power. Yeah, and for some reason, every single time it's always younger people. When I went to Egypt, I think I'm not sure if I told you the story. But when I went to Egypt, I I hired a tour guide because I just I didn't want sure. to get kidnapped. Yeah, yeah, you know, or whatever, right? Hold health ransom, or whatever the case may be, right? Smuggled into a pyramid or something. I will give him twenty bucks to get you back. <laughs> Thanks, bro. No problem. I appreciate that. I would have contributed to the GoFundMe. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, we're, we're driving around. Um, this guy is RAV4, and, you know, there's a lot of poverty in Egypt. And uh, you, see, you see you see, a lot of guys standing in the corner. I'm like, hey, what, what about those guys? What about those guys? I was just curious about the demographics. Like, those people sold drugs, those people sold drugs. And those people, they are smuggling people. They, they mm -hmm. kidnap young, young people, and then they ship them. Mm -hmm. And then... I would see older men walking around with little girls holding by their hands. I'm like, oh, good. Parents are walking their kids to school. And they would ask me, what do you see? What do you see the parent? I'm like, that guy right there, that guy right there, that guy right there. Like, and they would turn around and look at me like, no, that's, that's, that's uh, their future spouse. Damn. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, yeah. That man probably paid the family an X amount of money or they made an agreement with the family that that's going to be his future wife. How but, he, but he's going to hold off until she uh, has age. her menstrual cycle. No, not of age. Menstrual cycle. Menstrual. So I'm like, it could well, be 11, 12. Well, let me ask you. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. How, on average, what's the age that these, you know, little girls usually get pawned off to yeah. to another man? They're like the youngest they go is 11, <laughs> and they don't touch them until they have their menstrual cycle. Once they have their menstrual cycle, there's a free for all to do whatever they want with them. Sick shit, bro. So they mold them. 
Yeah. They literally mold them to how they want them to be yeah. and mold them to the wives they want to be. So you literally have grown men in their 30s, 40s, even yeah. 50s yeah. walking around 11, 12-year-olds yeah. that once they get their menstrual cycle, now they're officially women, Man. technically, and now you can be my wife. And now we have a ceremony, and it's beautiful based on our culture and our traditions. It's gross, man. Human trafficking, Jordan, if we can take a look at my screen. Human trafficking is a $150 billion a year industry that, uh, that is taking kids. Oh. And, and what happens is, bro, it's like you know, we're there. We're talking about uh, uh, Pablo Escobar. Well, you can sell a dime bag. You mm. make money, but you always got to get product, mm. right, to, to sell a dime bag. With kids, you can sell a kid five, six, seven times a day, every day, every week, every month for the next 10 years. That's the crazy part about it. And then on top of that, you see them at 15, 16 years old where the pedos, they don't see them as attractive anymore. Mm -hmm. They're too old, 15, 16 years old. So what they do sadly, bro, is that they now use them for organ harvesting. Mm -hmm. That's some disgusting stuff. Mm -hmm. So when, when we took Jojo to go see this, he's 12, I took the twins to go see it when we went to Chicago. And uh, after our workshop we did on, on Tuesday, which by the way, phenomenal job, Oak Brook, uh, we had a little over, um, uh, 400 people there, but uh, we took a bunch of people to the theater the next day. Okay, oh. we packed the theaters the next day, 11:30 a.m. So people took off work, people took off time to brought their families, brought their kids. Look at that. And we went to go see the movie because we want to make sure people know that uh, yeah. we're doing our part to at least, at least at the very minimum, create awareness. I know a lot of work still needs to be done, but at the very least, we need to create awareness. Of course. That this is a problem. Yeah. And and the thing is. Um, the horrific thing about this is you look at this movie, uh, uh, Sound of Freedom, okay? Um, this guy is the hero. The true story is around this guy, okay? Ballard, okay? Uh, he is the, uh, the, the uh, law enforcement agent who could not go back to his job until he rescued kids. And on top of that, what's happening here is the media, you know, oddly, is actually pushing back against this movie. Listen, this is not a political issue. Protecting our children is not a Democrat, Republican Republican type of issue. It's not a, I believe that regardless of what religion you are, regardless of ethnic background, your heritage, socioeconomic upbringing, if you have kids, I, I kind of say that you care about them. Yeah. It's, it's a natural thing that to have kids that you care about your kids, the protection of the kids, provision of the kids. And so uh, if we take a look at this Twitter, this Twitter um, video of what this, uh, this uh, a Rothschild author is saying about this movie, let's take a look at this clip. And you seem pretty familiar with him because he doesn't really hide his association with this real wild plot uh, that that involves, you know, drinking the blood of children and things like what? that. No, he doesn't hide it at all. And you have a lot of people who are in this world of QAnon who say, oh, they don't know what that is. They've never heard of it. They're just asking questions. With somebody like Jim Caviezel, he is openly embracing it. He's openly using its catchphrases and its concepts. He's speaking at QAnon conventions. And this film is being marketed to either specific QAnon believers or to people who believe all of the same tenets as QAnon, but claim they don't know what it is. And the sound of freedom does focus on a real issue. Well, of let's, sex let's, let's pause real quick. Let's pause uh, but real. that theme. So, uh, what is, so he goes, quick QAnon. What is QAnon? So, let's take a look at my screen. QAnon is a wide ranging, completely unfounded theory that says that President Trump is waging a secret war against, Satan, against elite Satan worshiping pedophiles in government, business, and the media. QAnon believers have speculated this fight will lead to a day of reckoning where prominent people, such as former president can, candidate Hillary Clinton, will be arrested and executed. Okay, so this is this thing that's going out there, secret mm -hmm. society, unfounded theory. Okay, let's, let's get back to this, this uh, broadcast. I know what it is. And The Sound of Freedom does focus on a real issue of sex trafficking, uh, but that theme, it, it's sort of like that kernel of truth that feeds the QAnon conspiracy theory. Uh, tell us how those two things work together. Sure. And the most durable and the most believable conspiracy theories are not entirely false. There's something in them that is true and the rest of it is false. But the believers point to the one true thing and they say, oh, you don't believe that this particular thing is true. In terms of child trafficking, we know trafficking is real. We know it has real victims. No one is denying that. But these films are created out of moral panics. They're created out of bogus statistics. Bogus They're created statistics. out of fear 
and it was You've something like Sound of Freedom. It specifically is looking labor. at QAnon concepts of these child trafficking rings that are run by the high-level elites, and only people like Tim Ballard and only people like Jim Caviezel, and by extension, only people like the ticket buyer can help bring these trafficking rings down. So there's a very participatory element. You're not just going to see a movie. You're just killing two hours on a hot day. You are helping bring down these these pedophile rings and save children. Now it's not true, but it's a very comforting and it's a very warm feeling to have. How the hell is this guy even defending the elites that are behind this thing? Because here's the thing, man. I, I, there is got to be some force, some evil force behind this thing. Because how does cuties get out there? How does this terminology of no longer calling them pedophiles, but calling them minor attracted persons? How does this language get out there that it's normal, yeah. right? And if, if you, have, you have children, somebody kidnaps your kids. And if you look at this movie, I mean, I couldn't imagine the father in this movie. This is horrific what this father's going through. How would you feel? You have like zero power. And then uh, uh, the people that are asking you to fix it, they're behind this whole shit. Yeah. So I don't know. What, what's your reaction to this knucklehead? It's all money moving, man. It's all money. It's yeah, and at this point, I don't, I don't even want to say that it's politics. It's all it's all money in, in, in this position, and we were talking about it earlier when we first started uh, started the show, and we started getting all these glitches. It's hmm. I, I don't find it to be a, co a coincidence that the main the, you know the mainstream media's and the and the people who have the biggest uh, investments, that their big their money in certain uh, media outlets and certain platforms. That those are the platforms that are completely being disrupted when it comes down to exposing these type of truths of a reality. And it's and the thing is, you know, they're, they're trying to negate the, the severity of it when in reality, there's a lot of people that we that we know that you know your, mm -hmm. your sister and your brother-in-law are, are involved. And in, you know, some of us who are watching this and some people who are gonna be watching this in the long run and come across this video that we know people within families or you know extended families that have been involved in this. And it's a real, real, real thing. And it's and hit and it's close to home, and it's and it's hard to be able to see these type of um, uh, videos and clips uh, that involve these situations. Because at the end of the day, man, even if it's not a political thing, even if you don't, you're not really heavy on this, and you don't really believe what we speak on, it's really hard to see a six, seven, eight, nine year old have to go through the type of experience yeah. and then live out a life of trauma the rest of your life yeah. and have those images in your head for uh -huh. the rest of your life. You destroy that kid's innocence. Forever. Or even even that, just moment of trauma in the moment of them experiencing that, they lose their lives. I don't think yeah. any child, there is no child in this world that was asked to be brought into this world. Yeah. And I think, you know, our duty as adults, or at least for the parents or people who brought the, these kids into the world, I think it's their duty to make sure that these kids live a good life and mm -hmm. experience a good life. It's not the children's fault that they're alive. It was, you know, it's it's mm -hmm. the man and woman that decided to lay, and, and you know it's unfortunate because a lot of these people and the the people who end up getting targeted are the ones who are struggling the most financially. The low income families, the sure, ones who sure. have no resources, yeah. the ones who yeah. are in seek, need, need of help, and then here comes someone with money. Yep, I can help you. Yep, I'll take your daughter off your hands. I'll take your son off your hands, or I'll provide X Y Z. I just need X Y Z favors from them. Well, just you, as you mentioned in other in other countries, yeah, you know it's legal because that family that may produce a, a, a daughter yeah. or, or a young boy, they'll sell them to acquire money or, or whatever yeah. to somebody that's got more money. In Egypt, these children still get traded for cattle and for livestock in Egypt. In some, in some yeah. countries, if you don't pay your debt, they confiscate your kids. Yeah. They don't repo your stuff. So my sister, uh, she's part of the International Justice Mission, the largest uh, uh, human uh, anti-trafficking uh, nonprofit in in, in the country based in D.C., right there next to the Pentagon. But we do a lot of fundraisings for that. So, you know, um, I'm seeing this more and more as a, as a not only after we create awareness, but we really need to create some financial resources because here's a problem. The police forces, the police forces are underfunded as it begins, as it, you know, as it begin with. And then at the time, they don't have the resources because, for example, uh, you know Rudy Ortiz, right? Yes. Uh, her, his wife has got a master's degree. She worked for um, social, social services. So what she would do is, she goes, she goes I remember a, a case of this where we rescued a nine-year-old, a 10-year-old, and come to find out, and we put him, we find him, put him with the good, her, her grandmother, right? Come to find out, guess who was in it also? Grandmother. Grandmother. Yeah, no shit. And she'd say, yeah, these weird men would come in my room late at night because they're, they're bad neighborhood and the way they can make money instead of selling drugs because you, you got to know somebody to sell drugs. Yeah. But I can pimp my grandkids out. And so... Bro, so they rescued, put it with a good family. 11 years old, this girl gets pregnant, has a kid. And, you know, 
And so, it's, so she's in the system. So Rosie's staying on top of this stuff. And I'm, like, I'm looking at Rosie. I'm like, how did you deal with this stuff uh, as a social worker? Mm-hmm. And, and the type of things that the scenarios that you'd be going into. But this stuff is happening. And the, the sad part of it, even if you rescued a kid out of the, you know, out of it for the time being, yeah. and you put him back with a family, they might be in it too. Yeah. So it's like a, it's a frustrating thing for the cops to do. And so, you know, you know, parents, listen, man, we, we, we got to do our part. You got to do your part to uh, to make sure you're there not only to provide, but also to protect. And therefore, for those of you that's thinking about just casually having sex and you have a kid, mm. this is the reason why we talk about this type of stuff. Is because, as Milton mentioned earlier, if you end up sleeping with a girl or a guy that you regret, and they're not the type of mother, not the type of father you hope them because they're a bum girlfriend, they're a bum boyfriend, and they're not going to change because they're with you. You should be careful who you're having sex with. Then you get pregnant and you bring, bring a kid into this world. You add to the problem. You're a burden on the government. You're a burden on society because now you need help from other people because you're not sustaining yourself. And then what's worst case scenario, the temptation of this stuff to be, to put your kid to the, the unraveling. I see where this road goes. So um, my recommendation is go see this movie. Not only do go see this movie, take people with you. And I think right now, as of last week, it was the number one movie in America. Yeah. They don't have any big studio money to promote it. I mean, other movies like Mission Impossible and other things, they'll have months of promoting a movie. They didn't have a lot of money promoting this. It's all by word of mouth. Which says that if it's the number one movie in America today, guess what? People aren't caring if it's this Republican or Democrat. People yeah. aren't caring if it's this QAnon and, and, and all this garbage that they see. All they care about is you're messing with our kids when you go out there, when you're supporting a message like this. So therefore, some policymaker finally creates something that, and I, and I heard that California, uh, California just came out with a law. I just got a text yesterday. California, the, the Department of Justice um, came out with a law that uh, Biden's DOJ, Department of Justice, has removed child sex trafficking from its lists of areas of concern. Okay? This is as yesterday. The Biden's DOJ has removed child sex trafficking from its list of areas of concern. Well, of all the kids that come across the border, too, as well, it's also, it's also been said that two, 300,000 kids have been illegally crossing the border to do this, to no, no border. Yeah. They've lost track of 85,000 kids. We lost track of 85,000 kids. Kind of know where it's going. Yeah. And so um, what are your thoughts on this? You're watching this podcast, you listen to this podcast, what are your thoughts? So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.